Hello and welcome back to another Squeaky Chimp tutorial and today I'm going to be carrying on the theme of um, tatting and um, I've already posted a couple of videos showing you how to begin to tat. So this was our little sample that we made and this was using this really funky nylon um, thread which is really big but it's really good for learning how to tap but once you kind of get the hang of it and in my second video I show you how to make something quite simple but once you get the hang of it you might want to move on to using a thread something similar to this now this is called Lisbeth and or Lisbeth and it is a size 20 and they do thread that's a lot smaller and they also do thread that's a lot bigger so a size 20 is this size a size 40 will be smaller 80 smaller still and um, my particular preference is 20 because my eyesight's not great and I can see the knots but you know you can choose whatever size thread you want but one of the things that Lisbeth are really good at is doing some really nice coloured threads they also do some plain thread so I've got white I've got all sorts of colours but they do do some really nice coloured threads but me being me I never like to just kind of um, go with the flow and I always like to experiment and see whether I can come up with some other colours hand dye them come up with some other weird and wonderful combinations so that is what we are going to be doing today and you're going to be coming along with me whilst I experiment with different types of dyeing and I have done some recently and I posted them on my Instagram page and a lot of people were like how did you do that can you give us a tutorial so here we go this is what I'm going to be doing so what you need in order to dye some thread is thread and I'm going to be, so when I first of all had a go at dyeing thread, and as you can see, um, I've kind of got dye everywhere, so make sure you wear gloves. Um, but the first thread I did was I just took a Lisbeth 20 white thread, which is colour 601. I just did white thread and I just dyed that. But today what I'm going to be doing is I'm also going to be taking this thread, which is, is a kind of, it actually shows up better on the camera if I'm honest with you. They call it, I think they call it something like latte or cappuccino, but it's it's essentially this thread, which is uh, 690, which is like a kind of caramel colourish kind of latte colour. But they've mixed it in with a white and it's a bit variegated. But I thought that that would be, make quite an interesting effect because you've got the light and the dark and how it picks up. So we're going to be having an experiment with white with this one and also with this one because this has already got colour in it so it's got some yellows it's got some um kind of paler paler turquoisey whitey bits and then it's got the turquoise in it and i thought that would be quite interesting to over dye it to see what colours we get come out so what you're going to need in order to dye or what i'm going to use is i've actually got these dyes which are dyes for wool because back in the day I used to do spinning and I used to get my own wool from the sheep and spin it and dye it and do all sorts of bits and pieces like that. So I've still got these dyes left over and I know these dyes work on these. No other mordants needed, which is a kind of a, um, a chemical that you add in to make the dye stick. Nothing like that was needed. I've not re needed to use any of that. It just dyed it and I've washed it and the colour has stayed. And so I've not needed anything extra. So we're going to have a go with those. I've also got these, which is liquid batik dyes, which again, I've done batik in the past, um, kind of done lots of crafts in the past. But um, I'm going to have a go with these because again, I know that these work and they're they don't come out but I've also got because not everyone has access to all of these sorts of things so what I've also got are some fountain pen inks and these are quite cheap to buy so I've got some red blue green and purple and then in these little bottles I've got some turquoise which is quite watered down ink and then this one I think is a pink one but this isn't watered down so kind of got a lot of things we can experiment today but what I want to do, first of all, is show you how to prepare the wool, it's not wool, the thread in order to dye. So I will clear all of this away and then I will come back and show you how we're going to prepare the thread. 
Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to prepare our thread. But before we do that, what I want to do is I just want to explain to you about how you can affect the positioning of your colours and the repeats of your colours by how you prepare your thread. So I just want to show you this one. So this is the thread that I used in my last one. So you can see that we've got a pink here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to unwind it until I get to the pink again, which is going to be here. So here we go. This, it looks like this is my repeat. So you can see I've kind of got back to the beginning again. And then if I carry on winding it, you can see that hopefully the colours kind of match up ish. Let's have a look and see if we can get them to match up a bit better. So we kind of want kind of match up ish. But as you can see, if I bring that back round, but as you can see that, because it's quite long, in order to dye this, this is how long the thread has been. And it's been in various different dye baths, but that's how long the thread has been. So when we are preparing our threads, if we take our threads and we wind it up like this, and we wind it up quite small, if I pull some more out, wind it up quite small, like so, and then we dip it into threads, the amount of thread that's actually going to get covered with the dye is going to be quite small which means that when you come to tat it, your transition is going to be quite small and you might want that. But if you want your transitions to be a lot longer, then what you need to do is get longer threads and then put it in. So then you have longer pieces of thread with dye in it. And that's what we're going to do today is we're going to prepare some thread with some longer transitions because I just want to see what it's like. Um, and what you need to do is, is you need to find something that you can wind your thread around in order to create um, some thread. And what I have here is just a dream journal um, and I'm going to use that to wrap my thread round. So I'm going to take this side because I don't want to use this side that's got these edges. So I'm just going to move those out the way. And I'm going to, and you've got to think about as well, how much thread do I need in order to make something? Because there's no point in dyeing something like that, that little tiny amount. I mean, if you just want to try it, feel free to do it. But in terms of tatting, you could probably maybe make a butterfly with that. But that's about it. But if you actually want it for a project, you need to think about how much do I actually need to take off in order to dye something. You may decide you want to commit to this whole roll, which is something like, um, how annoying is that? It's only in yards. What are yards? 200, sorry, 210 yards. And I've absolutely no idea what that is in metres. But it's that much in yards, which is no use to me. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind it around here and I'm going to get quite a lot off. Because I want quite a lot. Now this stuff very easy to get knotted up see already not really easy so we have to be really careful with it and make sure that we just go slowly we don't get the knots and that if they appear don't pull them really tight I mean in tatting that's what we want we want these knots but when we're doing this we don't so just pull off small amounts I got a bit excited then when I was pulling off very annoying. Come on thread. Come on. Would help if I had nails. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to wind this round until I have on here as much as I want. Scissors out the way. And once your thread is quite loose on your ball, like it is on here, 
from where I take it from the middle, you can just widen it round. When you're at the beginning of it, it takes a little bit of time to actually get it loose. You kind of have to give it a good old yank out. So I think for this, that is probably going to be enough. So I'm going to chop it off. And what I'm going to do is I have a spare bit of thread here. It doesn't really matter. But I'm going to take it and I'm going to cut it in half. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to post it under here. And I'm going to loosely tie my thread strands together. Because these come undone. These get all muddled up quite easily. And trust me. Once you've dyed it and then you've got to try and unknot it, as you can see how easy it is to get knotted, it's impossible. So I'm also going to do the same to the other side. And I'm going to tie a knot. And this is just going to help to keep all those threads together. Now, again, another little tip is you might decide that actually when you tie these knots, you want to tie them really tight. And that way, the dye won't get into where you have tied those knots and it will create white patches. So you might decide that actually that's what you want to do and you might do that all the way along. But that, if I now take that off of here, is now our first section of thread to be dyed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare all of my other threads and I'll be back when I've done all of those and then we can start the dyeing process. I've actually got this, which is a printing tray, so or, or just a painter's palette, but this is what you can sometimes put things in. So I'm going to put everything in here, and this will just help to keep it all contained. Okay, so it is a good idea to rinse your thread first. It will help to get rid of any kind of setting agents that... Um, they have used and really all I'm doing is literally just dunking it in some water and letting it soak so that all the fibres become wet. So um, I've just got all of my threads in this water and what I've set up here are five little dyeing stations and in my cups and what I've done is I've put a little bit of water in them and what I find is that it's actually better to start with a small amount of water and then if I need to add more I can but what I can't do is take away once I've added the dye it's very difficult to take it away so that is my yellow and again you can see I've kind of got bits of other colors in but that's fine I'm going to leave it like that because the yellow is quite a strong color and as I've already mentioned before, yellow is like my least favourite colour in the world. Um, so I'm going to leave it like that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get one of these greens out here. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to suck up with one of these little bottles some of the water. And I'm going to poke it in there. There we go, that will do. And I've actually now just made a bit of a green dye in here, which is quite fun. Do we want to add a purple? Because I kind of think we've already got a turquoise on the go. I'm thinking let's add, put, <coughs> so I've got this one and I, I checked before whether I could get this to dip into all of them and I can't. So what I think I want to do is I want to get this to dip into maybe three of them and I've already got some yellow in this and I've already got some green in this so I'm wondering what will happen to my colours if I dip it into those ones so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip it like that and see what happens see what kind of colour effects we get because as the dye where it's wet as the dye travels up a little bit and goes to meet some of the colours then you might sometimes get a little bit of a, a mixing of colours but it just depends on how much it sucks it up. So if I now take my white one and I'm just going to wring it out a little bit take my white one and open it up and I think with this one what do I want to do? Um, I think I'm going to go with pink, purple, green. 
and see what happens. And I've got maybe too much green. So I'm going to pop that in there. Stick that in there. Put that in there. And put that in there. Now it might be that I actually need more water, more dye. But we can play with that later. Like so. And then I'll get my last one out. Which is the one that was already dyed a kind of cappuccino colour with the mixtures in. And I think I'm going to try and get this to go into four of them. So I'm going to try and go yellow, pink, red, which is just the bizarrest thing. Because I'm sure I put, cause this is supposed to be pink and this one is supposed to be red. But never mind. Let's just plonk this in. Got yellow in and then we've got this colour in. Okay. That I've got this spray which has got the alcohol in. What I might try and do is see what happens if I just spritz the tops. So that's adding just like another bit of colour to it. So let's see what that's like. And let's, I'm just going to leave these to soak for a while and see what happens and this one here sorry because I am faffing I like to faff but I can see that this one didn't go anywhere near the green so what I'm wondering is can I maybe because I've got this little bottle that's got a little bit of green in, can I maybe just add a few bits of green like to the tops here like here and see what effect that has on it. Okay, let's see what it's like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave these for about an hour just to sit here, just to kind of um, think about it and to soak up any dye that it needs to soak up and that it can soak up. And then I'll show you what they look like in about an hour. This is the first one and I think this is the one where we used this thread. So this thread we use this kind of like weird cappuccino colour. And um, this is what it now looks like. Look at this. So we've got some yellow. So that yellow that we had and then we've got that. Um, I don't even know what colour that is, but it's slightly weird. But we've got a little bit of turquoise going on, going into peaches with a bit of a strong pink. Kind of reminds me a little bit of watermelon, but not. But look at that. That's just fab. I love it. I just love it. So that's one of them. It's still wet. Then we've got the next one, and I can see that this next one is most definitely the white thread. So this is the one that I did the white thread. Um, and it always comes out quite a fresh kind of colour, if that makes sense. So here we go. I just wind it up. So this is the one that we only must have put in a couple of them. I think I only put it in the purple one. So I put it in the purple one, the pink one. And the green one, which is really interesting because this green, which was these, has actually dyed it turquoise and the purple has hardly come out at all. So we actually put quite a lot of purple in there, but actually it's not really come out very purpley at all. We've got a random bit of grey going on here. Not sure where that's come from, but we've obviously got a bit of grey going on. But I love it, the bit of pink and the turquoise. I love it. Okay, let's look at the next one. So the next one was the one where we actually already started off with this colour, which was already a multicoloured one with some yellows, sort of greenish and turquoise and a sort of paler colour. Are you ready? Oh, I just love this process. I mean, look at this. Look at this. So we've got some really weird pinks and purples going on in this bit. We've got some more like pastely ones going on here. 
we've got some like dark blues, quite um, quite stormy sea colours. And then again, one that's very similar to this one here, going on here. Oh, I just love it. Which then makes me think, because when you look at this, you can go, oh, what did I, what did I put in this one to get this? So if I wanted to recreate this one again, how could I do that? But that is what that one looks like, which I just think for using just, you know, of, uh, only a few little colours, that is what we've got. Okay, we are at the end and we've dyed our thread and it's all on its own little reel and I'm just going to show you it close up. So this is the one that we dyed with this thread and I think one of the important things about um, adding on what was the original thread is that actually these two would probably work quite well together. They kind of look a bit better off camera than they do but there is still some resemblance of original colours so you could mix these mix these two colours together on a tatting and they'd work quite well. Um, but these are the depths of the colours that we've got, which I just think is just lovely. I really love it. And again, so this is the white one that we originally had, and we've got these colours. Really nice. You know, you just never know what you're going to get. You can't see too much purple on it. Um, which is a shame, which just goes to show that actually that purple pigment didn't really set, but weirdly the green one came out as turquoise, so explain that one. Um, and that's what I mean, you just never know what you're going to get, so it's worth experimenting. And this one, which is actually, I think, I think it's actually turned out to be my favourite, is this one, which is this sort of cappuccino-y colour one, has actually dyed up with these kind of colours, Really nice dusty colours, kind of yellows, really nice bits of grey. I've no idea how we got the grey, but um, really nice. And again, you could easily mix these two colours together in order to make, you know, a really nice tatting pattern. Um, so there we go. There is my guide to how to dye your own tatting thread. I hope you enjoyed it. I will be putting lots more... Um, crafting videos up and so if you would like to subscribe to the channel it really helps me um, if you could like the video as well it costs you nothing but um, it means the world to me and it really helps my youtube channel grow um, if you'd like to leave a comment that would be even better um, and yes i am aware that when i originally wrote this there was only one l in it but I kept looking at it and thinking it's not quite right. So I have gone and put the other L in. Um, but I apologise, I am dyslexic. But we get there in the end. Um, so there we go. There's my threads. Enjoy. Have fun creating them yourself. Bye.